اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم in the name of Allah most gracious most merciful those who believe in the issue of alteration and distortion of the holy Quran they have attached to an evidence what is that evidence they say the issue of collection of the holy Quran they have brought the traditions talking about the collection and compilation and codification of the Holy Quran and then they have said that because of these traditions we must believe that alteration has occurred because according to these traditions uh, the third caliph Uthman burned all other copies then they compiled and they collected a new uh, version of the Holy Quran. It means that it has been altered. It means that there were different types of versions. And these traditions clearly prove this fact. The general answer to this type of traditions is that who says that these traditions are true and correct you have as far as the truth and correctness is concerned they have taken it for granted they have already believed that these traditions are correct then they have believed in the issue of alteration but we are saying that these traditions are basically they are not true because they are contradictory. There are a lot of contradictions in these traditions. Before to explain these contradictions, let me read to you some of these traditions, at least two or three traditions, which show the issue of collection of the Holy Quran. Then we will see that are they through, true or not. The first tradition is from Zayd ibn Thabit. Zayd ibn Thabit, the Arabic text is very long. I don't read the Arabic, just I read the translation to you. He said, and Zayd ibn Thabit says that, Abu Bakr sent for me when the Muslims were slain in the battle of Yamama. When I entered, I found Omar ibn Khattab with him. Abu Bakr said, Omar came to me and said, casualties were have amongst the Quran reciters during the battle of Yamama. And I am afraid that heavier casualties might take place among the reciters in other battles. And much of the Holy Quran would be lost. I am of the opinion that you should order the collection of the Holy Quran. I asked Omar, Abu Bakr says, I asked Omar, how do I dare to do it, something that the messenger of God did not do it. Omar replied, by God, it is good thing to, to be done. Omar kept urging me until God opened my chest. I came to view the matter that he did. Then Zaid says that Abu Bakr told me, you are a wise young man, and we trust you. You used to record the revelation for the messenger of God. So, go and find the, all the fragments of the Holy Quran and put them together. Then Zayd ibn Sabit says that, really by God, if they had required me to move a mountain, it would be easier 
for me than collecting the Holy Quran. Then I said to Abu Bak, Zaid says, I said to him that, how dare I do something that the messenger of God did not do it? Abu Bak persisted in his demand until God opened my chest for that uh, mission. Then I started and began collecting it from palm branches, flat stones, and breasts of the people who had memorized it until I found the last two verses of the holy uh, the, of the chapter of Bara'ah. The tradition continues, then I don't want to read all the tradition. Therefore, from this tradition, we know that Zayd ibn Sabit came to Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr says that because many reciters are being martyred in the battle of Yamama, and we are fearing that the Holy Quran may go and may be lost, then, because we believe in you, we trust you, you go and collect them. This is the first tradition. The second tradition is from Anas ibn Malik. Anas says that Hudayfa, one of the companions of the Holy Prophet, came to Uthman and said that, O commander of faithful, save third community before it falls in dispute over the book as the Jews and the Christians have done. So, Uthman sent to Hafsa to send us the scrolls that they can be copied into codices. Hafsa sent them to Uthman and Uthman ordered Zayd ibn Thabit, Abdullah ibn Zubair, Sa'd ibn As and Abdul Rahman ibn Huraith to copy them into codices. Then Uthman told the three of Qurayshi men, whenever you disagree with the ibn Sabit on any point of the Holy Quran, write it in the dialect of the Quraysh for it was revealed in their tongue. The tradition continues. Again, in this tradition, we are told that Abu Bakr ordered these people, four people, to collect it. And then there are some Qurayshi people that they should check the pronunciation and it should be uh, written down according to the tongue of Qurayshi. There is a third tradition, the last tradition about this issue that I want to read it to you. It is related that during the Caliphate of Uthman, different teachers were teaching different readings of the Holy Quran to their students. It used to happen that the students would meet and disagree. The matter reached a point that they would take their dispute to the teachers, who would then condemn each other's readings. This situation reached Osman's ears. He delivered Osman. He delivered an oration and said, "You are here by me. You disagree on the reading and pronunciation of the Holy Quran." Therefore, those who are far away from me in the provinces must be in a greater dispute, making greater grammatical errors. O companions of Muhammad, come together and write a complete version of the Quran for the Muslims. These are three traditions. And they say that because of these traditions, we have to believe that alteration has occurred in the Holy Quran. But what is the answer and reply to these traditions? First of all, these traditions are really contradictory. Why? First, 
First of all, we don't know, according to these traditions, whether the collection and compilation of the Holy Quran has happened in the time of Uthman or in the time of Omar. Which of them? Their different traditions have different opinions. Secondly, in the time of Abu Bakr, who collected them? Was it Zayd ibn Thabit or Abu Bakr himself or Omar? Or Omar and Zayd, different traditions give different suggestions. Number three, some of these traditions say that in the time of Abu Bakr, none of the verses of the Holy Quran were omitted. But the other traditions say that in the time of Uthman, some of these verses were omitted as the last two verses of Surah Al-Bara'ah or Surah Al-Tawbah that the man came across a person who had these two verses. Those two verses, number four, those two verses which were appended to the Holy Quran, was it done in the time of Abu Bakr, Omar, or Uthman? Different traditions and different opinions and suggestions. This is the first answer. We want to say that the traditions of collecting of the Holy Quran themselves are contradictory. This is first. Secondly, the main reply to these traditions and the main answer to these traditions is this one, that these traditions are in contradiction with those traditions which say that the Holy Quran was revealed in the time of the Holy Prophet, listened by the companions, memorized by them, written by them, and codified by them. There are many reasons and evidences which show that the collection and compilation of the Holy Quran happened in Kanzul Ummal is a very authentic book among our Sunnite brothers, but there is a muntakhab of that book by Muttaqi Hindi, volume 2, page 48, that tradition. But the second tradition, I read it to you. This tradition is uh, Tabarani narrates it and relate. Tabarani and Ibn Asakir, they say that as Sha'bi says, the Holy Quran was collected during the lifetime of the Messenger of God. As Sha'bi says, that the Holy Quran was collected during the lifetime of the Holy Messenger of God by six individuals from the Ansar Ubay ibn Ka'b, Zayd ibn Thabit, Mu'adh ibn Jabal. Abu Dar'a, Sa'd ibn Ubayt, and Abu Zayd. These people collected the Holy Quran except for two or three surahs, according to this tradition. You can find it in the very reference that already I gave it to you. This is first, that we have traditions which say that the Holy Quran was collected under the supervision of the Holy Prophet of Islam in the lifetime of the Holy Prophet of Islam. Secondly, there are some verses within the Holy Quran which are expressing of the Holy Quran as a book, as a book. 
as a book and chapters. It means that when you read the Holy Quran, في كتاب مكنون لا يمسه إلا المطهرون تنزيل من رب العالمين and the surahs and the chapters were very clear because إن كنتم في ريب مما نزلنا على عبدنا فأتوا بسورة من مثله وادعوا شعداءكم these type of verses are calling the surah surah or chapter it means that the chapters were known in the time of the Holy Prophet. It was in the form of a book that everybody could show it to others. It was in the hand of non-believers. And many non-believers were trying to refute the book, to bring a chapter if they could uh, contradict it. They wanted to answer the challenge of the Holy Quran. Therefore, it shows that in the lifetime of the Holy Prophet of Islam, it was in the form of a book. In addition of all these verses, we have Hadith of Thaqalain. The Hadith that Prophet is saying, I am living among you two things, Kitab Allah, the Book of Allah. If it was not gathered, if it was not collected and compiled, how Prophet of Islam is uh, expressing the word Kitab Allah. If it was scattered in different hands, in different houses, in the form of different sheets, it would not be correct to call it Kitab or book. So it is against the tradition of Thakalain. And above all of them, it is not intellectual. We cannot agree with that, that the Holy Prophet of Islam does not pay attention to this very important task of collecting of the Holy Quran, not to be altered, not to be distorted, not to be lost. It's very important. Muslims from the beginning of Islam until the last hour of the lifetime of the Holy Prophet, were watching carefully the revelation as soon as it was revealed. They could get it, memorize it. And Prophet Muhammad wasallam paid too much importance on the issue of memorization of the Holy Quran. And Muslims and companions were very careful about this issue. How can we believe that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu left us without gathering this revelation and let the holy book of Quran happen to it what happened to the Gospels, what happened to the Old Testament and New Testament? No, we have kutab and katib, katib al wahi those who were scribes, of the revelation in the lifetime of the Holy Prophet that we made mention some of the names of these companions. Therefore, these traditions that they want to tell us alteration has happened, we answered them that these traditions are not reliable and they are contradictory. They are in contradiction with other traditions and with our intellect and with the Holy Quran itself. We will continue this issue inshallah in other programs. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.